guys, it's Teacher Tana and welcome back to my online classroom. Today I'm really excited about sharing some information that I've implemented in my class with lots of success. Today I'm going to talk specifically about how to differentiate for students and how to gather that data in order to create customized lessons for, for each of them. Um, so the first part of my video, I'm going to show you how I do this um, the old school way. And then I'm going to show you uh, about a program that I've discovered in the last few weeks that has really helped me to streamline this information so I don't have to do as much front end work, but I still get the same back end results, which is really specific targeted information that I can use to plan future lessons for each of my students. So here we go. All right, so one problem that I find that's a common issue for teachers is that we get students with all kinds of levels of learning. So some of our students are really advanced and some of our students are in need of remediation. So in my class, I see this really commonly, especially because I work with English language learners. So I'm always trying to fill in the gaps and those gaps are usually created because they are learning two languages at once or have been schooled in one language and are now moving into English. And so we're trying to catch up either with the academic piece or with the language piece and this can be really overwhelming. There's a couple of things that I've tried to do in the last couple of years that are um, what I call like teacher hacks and they've helped with this um, and so I want to share that with you today. But then I'm also going to tell you about some of the issues I find with even this solution and then I want to finish off explaining to you or showing you a new product that I just recently found that it's going to streamline this information and make it much easier for me saving you and the student time and really best practices for our students which is what we always want to move towards. So let me jump right in. So here's an example of something that I've assigned to a student who I think is struggling with capitalization. So like I've said before, I work with English language learners and one of the big things that we work on is writing. So especially at the high school level because we're trying to prepare our students for college and career, which usually um, means a lot of writing for our students. So if a student, um, if I'm grading their essay or their piece of writing and I notice they're really struggling with capitalization, I want to jump in and give them some remediation for capitalization. So this is an example of a document that I might share with a student who I notice is having inconsistencies in their capitalization uh, rules. Maybe they're not applying them well or they're only applying two or three rules out of the six that I've been practicing with them. So what I would do is I would share with just that individual student a document like this. So within the document you can see step one, I ask them to tell me what they already know. Usually students have some sort of background, whether that's in their first language language or whether that's one or two rules that they think that they understand or have applied or it can even be a really good spot for you to see like where a misunderstanding might be forming for the student. And then I have the student watch the video. Sometimes I make the videos. Oftentimes I find them off YouTube. There's lots of free information. I would definitely vet the video. Make sure it's showing the information that you want. And then you can see in step three, step three is usually going to be a combination of the student watching and taking notes off the video. So this particular video that I've chosen has six rules. And so they're going to go ahead and as they watch the video, fill in each rule with an example. And then finally, once they feel confident in that information, I'm going to have them go down to step four. This is their chance again to show me what they have learned. It's similar to the KWL charts like uh, what you know, what you want to learn, and what you learned, mi minus the middle, what you want to learn. And then finally, step five, they're going to show their learning. So for me to show their learning, I've actually created Google Form quizzes. And I prefer Google Form quizzes because I can make them multiple choice, and the quiz will grade for me. So I'm going to show you an example of a quiz. So this is my capitalization quiz. I also call it my MITS quiz because we use MINTS as an acronym for capitalization. So here they all fill in their email address, their last name and first name, and then they're going to tell me um, how MINTS helps. You know, basically all this is wrapping up what we've studied about capitalization. They're going to quickly answer the questions and submit their form. The really cool thing is if I press the edit button, I can actually see responses. So I can go on over here to responses and I can see the average score for the student, how they did. They can get a direct score right away. So you can see scores right here. Um, and then you can see which ones they missed, what their thinking was for the rules. Um, and then you can see their actual scores. So I, it's easy to see a pattern here if maybe the student isn't 
um, quite doing what I thought they were doing, or maybe the class as a whole is showing some a confusion, it's easy to see it right here. So you can look at that data. So the really cool thing about that is I get this pretty quick data. It's multiple choice, so it grades it for them. It releases the exam um, uh, points to the student right away, and that's really helpful. So then I can decide to like meet with the student again based on their score or maybe even zero in a little bit more on the student's understanding. So it's really helpful. It's useful. Um, but at the same time, there are some gaps, in it, as you can see. So, for example, if the student still fails like the Google quiz, even though they feel like they've picked up the content knowledge, I really don't have a second version of these. At that point, I would just have to pull the student one-on-one -on -one and I have to figure out what's going on. Obviously, this information is going to help me, but I don't have more practice for the student. So if they don't get it at this point, I don't have like a secondary um, information that they can look at. Obviously, I can go out and find it just like I did here, but that would be a lot of work if I was doing this for every single grammar piece, which I do tend to do for my students. So we just kind of run into some issues here, right? I don't have endless amounts of materials. I don't have endless amount of time to create more materials. Um, I have the data that I can look at in that Google form, which is really nice. But also here on this sheet, um, if let's say 15, let's say I have 175 students, this is pretty normal for a high school teacher. Well, let's say 55 of them are getting this capitalization practice. It might not be that practical for me to be able to check all 55 of these students and like check all their understanding, check all their um, like their responses. That can get really overwhelming really fast. And so why I do like this and I do use it for um, smaller classes or from really like targeted practice for specific students, you can also see how it can get a little bit overwhelming. And I say all of that not to say that this is not a good product to use. This is actually really great. It gives me really good information for those students, especially if it's targeted, especially if it's just a handful of students at a time. And so that's a way you can do it. Maybe target this group for a month and the next group for another month or a couple weeks, a couple days, whatever way is most manageable for you. But this leads me to a product that I was recently introduced to called Albert IO. And Albert IO kind of does this thing, but does it for me and streamlines it and saves me the back end time of creating these pieces, but also the future, okay, what next if the student hasn't quite mastered the material like I was hoping they would. So let me jump into that. Okay, so let me show you how this um, program would work and how it can help you um, to kind of streamline what I was talking about earlier. So first of all, you can see that these are some sample classes. You can see that students are enrolled in them, which is really helpful. What I've done is I've created a folder, and this folder I've called Grammar Practice. So once I go into Grammar Practice, I'm going to show you how I can edit it and assign and create assignments for my students. So I know that I'm looking at uh, common and proper nouns. I really want understand, students to understand the difference so that they can capitalize, right? So similar to what I just showed you. So over here, we've got um, a bunch of practice for the students. So you can remember my practice had a few scattered things, a video for them to watch, some notes to take, and then a Google form. So it was pretty cut and dry, pretty fast. If you notice here though, look at how many questions I can assign that deal with common and proper nouns. It's just, it feels endless. Um, and then they're also filtered, so I can choose easy questions or I can choose medium questions. Um, and these are also obviously level of difficulty. And then we've got the D for the most difficult types of questions. And look at this. So I can choose a few of these and assign them to my student. And then if they're not, they don't quite get it, I can continue to assign them. Or let's say the student blew it out of the water, I can assign them something that's a little more difficult. So that's really neat for me. Another thing is when I've assigned this to the student, they can actually go through and answer the question. So let's look at an easy version question here. So here they've chosen their answers and then they can reveal a solution. So they can see what's correct, what's incorrect, um, and they can get feedback. And the feedback is really awesome because it actually has like this really neat cartoon which students relate to, especially my second language learners, that imagery is really important. And then it kind of sums up or gives them an example of or more of an explanation of why the answer is right or wrong. Um, really cool for me is that the standards are located here. I know kids may not necessarily be excited about that unless you're really specific about the standards, but these standards are aligned to like 
like Texas, New York, and for my state of Colorado as well. So there they are there. Um, so this is really neat. I can share it with just my student. So in this case, I just made a, a link to the whole folder, So which I wouldn't do because it's all of these questions. So it's over you know, three or 400 questions. But the neat part is that I can keep going back and assigning more. And then of course, just like my Google form was neat that it would grade it all for me, this does that as well. Now the one thing the Google form didn't do for me was give them individual feedback for the questions. Could I go in and give it? Sure. But um, but again, the cost up front, the time that I'm going to have to spend up front is going to be a lot versus this is already done for me. So it just saves me all that time. Okay. And then the other thing about Albert is that I can also assign quizzes just like I would have done with my Google Forms. So I can go to my topic quiz and I think I would save this until the very end, until I know the student really understands the information and then I can let them take it. Another cool thing about this, which I don't have for mine, is that I can use this as a pre-test. So if I'm not quite sure where the student is, I can give them this topic quiz, see where they're at, assign them based on that, and then give them their final quiz so that they can see their own growth. And I love that. Anytime I can show the student like where they started, the hard work they did in between, and then their final piece, um, the better I feel about the student's engagement, the student being fully um, cognizant of their uh, ability to grow and see that growth so i just it's my favorite part all right guys that's all i have for you today i hope you found that information useful i'm so excited to see you implement this in your classrooms don't forget to like and subscribe i've got more information and content coming your way see you on the internet